Just to give you a brief overview, uh, I'm going to talk about a few key facts about SRAM Tech. Then, uh, in a second topic, uh, I'll touch on the top clinical challenges which are out there at the moment. Uh, and then, uh, I will talk about the ceramic advantages I see. Um, which we have in order to master those clinical challenges. Okay, a few key facts. We are, as you can hear from my accent, we are located in Germany, uh, somewhere in, St in Stuttgart. Ceramtech has two main divisions. We have a medical division and uh, we have an industrial division. Uh, just a few figures. Our sales is in the order of 438 million. 3,600 employees and 18 manufacturing sites worldwide. When it comes to medical, we have three business areas or product areas. So we are dealing with HIP, uh, which is um, currently our most successful business areas and we have two new business areas. This is spine and extremities. This is where I work with. And then we have the knee area. Um, three manufacturing facilities, 40 years in medical business. As for the hip components, we have a 95% world market share out there. Uh, in 2014, we have produced and sold more than 1.3 million Biolux components. Biolux, by the way, is the brand name for our pink material. Uh, and I'm sure if you walk around here, you have seen uh, some pink ball heads here. And yes, we are the exclusive supplier for nearly all orthopedic companies out there. Let me talk about the top clinical challenges which are out there. And if you have a look, for instance, at the Australian Register, you can see that there is main three issues. Um, this is loosening and lysis, a big problem. Infection is a big problem out there in the clinics and metal and wear related issues. There's other sources that say that aseptic loosening is the predominant factor limiting the longevity of the prosthesis, accounting for over 75% of joint replacement failure. Infections, post-operative infections in the USA are reported as being one of the largest problems associated with arthroplasty. So this is a big issue out there. Um, and now the question is, what can we do? Or first the question is, why do we have those clinical challenges? And what can we do on the material side to help reduce the amount of those uh, cases out there? And what I would like to do is, I just want to give you a, a rough idea of a logical breakdown from the clinical challenge to the material parameters. Um, I don't want to go into detail, but um, just very briefly, there is a number of factors which you, um, in a, like in a logical pathway, you can go from the material side to the clinical challenge. If you look at, for instance, aseptic loosening, what leads to aseptic loosening? This is, for instance, osteolysis. What causes osteolysis? It can be particle release, for instance, polyethylene particle release. Um, what promotes particle release? This can be scratches, surface roughness. So what can you do on the material side? You can address um, those issues by uh, controlling material, for instance, in terms of hardness. When you have a hard material, uh, you can have a high surface quality, you can have less scratches, and then you can help to reduce those clinical challenges. Just an example. Or osseointegration. integration. If you um, have a way to solve osseointegration integration on the material side, um, which is um, influenced by macrostructure, microstructure, nanostructure of your surface, then you can um, have a better primary, secondary stability, and then you can reduce aseptic loosening. So it's very complicated overall. 
If you look at the number two challenge, infection for instance, what promotes infections? Definitely biofilm formation is one of the reason, reasons for infection. Biofilm is, is dominated by surface, for instance, and this, again, you can uh, influence on the material side, um, looking at parameters like hardness, wettability, electrochemical stability. Another reason for infection could be immune system overload. What could be a reason for immune system overload is, for instance, you have a high amount of metal ion release. You have corrosion, you have metallic particle release, and again, this can be controlled and adjusted or positively be influenced by your material parameters. Okay, so my basic message here is with the right material, we can successfully cope with those clinical challenges and help to reduce the number of cases here. And in the next following slides, I'm going to show you why this is so and where the parameters are. First of all, I think a very good argument for um, ceramics is our success we have in hip arthroplasty. So just historically, we can show that from the material side, we can deal with those issues. Um, this is because our Biolux Delta hip components are in the meantime gold standard in hip arthroplasty. It's been out there for a long time and we have a very good success story here. If you look, another advantage we see is when you uh, look at the material side, just at the material side, we have done, for instance, we're doing many studies, but this is just one study. We have looked at the septic revisions out there, and we have um, different groups here. We have, we have two groups where ceramics is involved in an articulation, and we have referred that to um, a metal group, basically. There were many um, different uh, hospitals involved in that. Without going into details, um, you can see that with wherever there is ceramics involved in an articulation, you have significantly lower revisions with ceramic-based articulations. When it comes to biofilm formation, we can also show in several studies, and this is actually an ongoing study, that with uh, the ceramic group, we have looked at three different groups. We have, looked, we have a ceramic group, we have a polymer group, we have a metal group, and what you see here is just the coverage of, the, of several bacterial, bacteria uh, we have released onto a surface. Um, if you just look at this parameter, it's just an example, then we can see that with our our ceramic materials, we have a significantly lower biofilm formation in the ceramic group. Where generally, I think, is uh, solved or more or less solved with uh, using ceramic materials, there is tons of studies out there that show this. Um, so whenever there is ceramics involved in an articulation, we can show that wear, the amount of wear particles is significantly re uh, reduced. This is due to the fact that ceramics is a very hard material, the only material harder than um, ceramics is diamond, and we have a very sophisticated production process that ensures extremely low surface roughness. Um, If you look at metal and PE particles, this is a typical um, picture from a surgery, where in, in a, from a hip surgery, where you have a lot of metal particles. You have metallosis. Metallosis can cause a lot of trouble. Metallosis can lead to pseudo tumors. Metallosis can even lead to uh, neurological um, uh, problems. We are going um, beyond hip, we are going towards new shoulder products. I cannot show you the shoulder projects which we have, but for those shoulder implants, we have done wear studies. We have compared our ceramics versus conventional PE, um, and we have done cobalt chromium on conventional PE, and in this study, following um, uh, well-defined kinematics, we have shown that the PE wear 
in an articulation with a metal head is 30% higher than in an articulation with a ceramic head. So here again, also in shoulder, we can significantly reduce the amount of polyethylene wear particles and such help to reduce uh, or to, to, to deal with those clinical challenges. Another interesting aspect is um, the articulation of ceramic versus nat natural cartilage. Uh, this is a study we have done uh, with the Rush University. Um, and this is also an ongoing study, but the key message here is when we have ceramics articulating against uh, natural cartilage, uh, we have less tissue damage than in an articulation with cobalt chromium. We have measured various parameters, the viability of the cells, for instance. We have evaluated the tissue morphology, and there's parameters um, for metabolism. And we could show that we are less damaging the natural cartilage. So, for instance, here, if you look at this, um, this is a live dead staining, and red is the amount of dead cells, for instance. So this is good news for ceramics, uh, because it offers new uh, possibilities for new applications in hemiarthroplasty. When it comes to wettability and surface roughness, it is very clear that ceramics has a much has much better properties in terms of wetting. The, the wetting angle is, 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 um, is lower. This ensures a continuous fluid film and high lubrification on ceramic surfaces. Together with extremely hard and highly polished surfaces, we get low friction, less wear. Um, this helps us um, for our new products, which we are um, which we have under development um, in the area of shoulder. Um, we work together with um, the top four uh, orthopedic suppliers for shoulder and we are we're going to launch in the next years a number of new shoulder um, uh, devices. So this helps us in tribological applications, but we're also looking at uh, small joints. And for instance, like in, 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 in Halux, Halux, we are developing a, um, an implant for Halux. When it comes to osseointegration, this is also an issue that helps to reduce uh, the effects of those clinical challenges. Um, it is very important um, to find solutions here. And what we have done here is we have developed trabecular ceramics. Um, there is different technologies to do this. I cannot go into detail um, here, but this, those technologies help us to go completely new pathways for new products. For instance, um, when it comes to 2D surfaces, we're going to apply this technology to our spinal cages. Uh, we are talking here about cervical fusion cages um, to promote osseointegration. And the next step will be to do this in three dimensions. And uh, what you can see on the left-hand side is a spinal fusion cage uh, based on this trabecular ceramics. So we are determined that with those new technologies, we can also um, make a big step forward uh, towards osseointegration. Osseointegration integration not only takes place on the macro and on the microstructure, it also takes place on the nano level. And here we are in cooperation with uh, several companies uh, which have different technologies. Um, we are evaluating bioglasses, for instance. We are evaluating um, monolayers, phosphate layers, and we are looking at HA nano layers. And um, with those layers, we have shown in several studies that there is a clear improvement of initial bone growth um, on our implants. 
the last aspect, which is very advantageous uh, when it comes to ceramic um, implants, is that threading, threading corrosion is not not an issue with uh, with ceramic implants. So you have less metal particles and ions and it contributes to, uh, to lower mechanical damage and implant failure. So we have tons of studies out there, for instance, together with uh, Steve Kurtz, that show that with ceramic materials we have a significant reduction when it comes to uh, threading corrosion because of the higher electrochemical stability of our material. So thank you very much and the key message um, I want to um, give you as a takeaway is that with ceramic, ceramtech ceramic materials we can successfully cope with urgent clinical challenges and significantly reduce the risks for the patients. Thank you.